Good morning from Hanoi, Vietnam. If you didn't see our last video, we've been here for about a week exploring all that Hanoi has to offer. But today, we're gonna go explore some cafes. Coffee is so important to Vietnamese people, as it is to us. So today, we get to explore a lot of what Vietnam has to offer for coffee. Usually, people just think about condensed milk and really strong coffee, but there's so much more than that. So we're excited to show you. Oh, it's toasty. We're starting off our morning at arguably one of the most famous cafes in Hanoi. And the reason they're famous is for their egg coffee. So in the 1940s, condensed milk was scarce. So Chef Jang created egg coffee, whipping up egg yolk and sugar as a replacement. So now this cafe is owned by the second generation. It's owned by his son. It's really cool. This family owned place. It's a lot of locals around and I'm so excited to have this lovely egg coffee. Something else that's really cool and become really iconic is they serve it in these bowls to keep it hot during the winter time. So it's got hot water inside to keep the cup hot. Don't need to worry about that today, but it's still an iconic symbol and they continue to do that in this traditional way. <laughs> Bless you. It's so delicious. The creaminess of the yolk with the strong, strong coffee. It's like tiramisu in a cup kind of. It's so, so yummy. This is my new favorite thing. <laughs> I, on the other hand, got black coffee with condensed milk because we do have condensed milk now. And just the thought of egg yolks in my coffee really throws me off, especially first thing in the morning. Oh, I'm going to be vibing today. <laughs> spots because the AC is now on. It feels so nice. <laughs> Something else that's really interesting about the coffee culture in Vietnam is that it's a slow culture for coffee. So you come in, you sit down, you order your beverage, take your time drinking it, and then when you're finished, then you go pay. So it's a lot more like a restaurant versus at home. It's like, get caffeinated, go get your coffee, get it to go. And it's just very utilitarian. Whereas here, it's really lovely to sit and truly enjoy the whole experience. So on that note, we're gonna go and continue to enjoy this experience in another spot. <laughs> So Victoria's way too nice, won't give it a rating because she just wants to be nice all the time. I hate doing these because I just want to tell everyone that they were lovely all the time. So granted I didn't have the egg coffee, I would give my overall coffee experience 7 out of 10. Then the cafe itself, I would maybe give it a 5.5. It was nothing special, but it was still a great environment. Well, that first experience having egg coffee was actually life-changing. And that's like my new favorite thing. I'm gonna have to figure out how to make it at home. A lot of people are super freaked out by the concept, a la Ryan, but don't be, just try it. It's so, so good and so cool to try it in the most iconic spot. So now we're heading to Hanoi Coffee Station and we're gonna get some breakfast. You get to sit up like a big girl. <laughs> like Victoria was talking about at the last place, generally coffee in Vietnam, when you think of it, you think of really sweet egg coffee, like really bold flavors. But there's also this growing trend of third wave coffees here in Vietnam with a focus on specialty coffee. And so what that means is, you know, farmers get paid more, it's a much higher quality coffee, and it takes a little bit longer to brew. So what beans are these? Red bourbon, okay. Where is it grown in Vietnam? Aeropress and Kate's 
So we've ordered two coffees, the exact same coffee, but brewed two different ways, an AeroPress and a V60. And even just from smelling them, they smell completely different. So I'm excited to see how they taste. So I would be very content having traditional pho for breakfast, but I sometimes there's just nothing like a Western style smoothie bowl, but I do feel like it's a little bit more legitimate to have a smoothie bowl in the place where the fruit is actually grown versus having it imported all the way to the frozen tundra in Canada. So I'm gonna enjoy it. <laughs> Claire's gonna enjoy some of the smoothie bowl too. I haven't had a chance to try the smoothie bowl yet, but uh, I'd say it's a bit of a hit. Food has been fantastic. We've obviously been a little bit distracted <laughs> just feeding Clara and watching her enjoy it all too. She's clearly, clearly having a grand old time. <laughs> I'm not sure if I've said this before, but Ryan is excessively picky when it comes to coffee because he knows so much about coffee and this has received the stamp of approval. Really though, these coffees are so fantastic. They roast their own beans here and they've maintained a lot of the flavors of the actual bean. So it's not just that dark flavor of the roast, but you can actually like taste all of the different fruit notes and everything. It's so good. Thank you, goodbye. Thank you. Hanoi Coffee Station, overall, incredible experience. I'm gonna give the coffee a solid nine. Delicious coffees, roasted here. It was just fantastic. And then the cafe itself, overall ambiance. I'm gonna also give it a nine. It's in this cool little alleyway, up a big set of stairs. Phenomenal spot. But I've heard the next place we're going is a bit of a hidden gem. This is so cool. Well, first impressions, this place is unreal. I saw a lot of pictures and a lot of other YouTube videos about this place, and it looked really amazing, but man, is it cooler in person. So they're really, really focused on using recycled materials. They're very passionate about limiting plastic use and all of that kind of thing. So all of the decor is recycled bottles and cans and random things to make tables. We're sitting on bits of a car, I think. So everything is just so creatively repurposed, it's awesome. So as much as we joke about Ryan being the really picky one with coffee, He's ruined me as well. And I also typically go towards the specialty coffees that have all of these fancy tasting notes and everything, and I drink my coffee black. But while we're here in Vietnam, drinking coffee with condensed milk has been so fantastic. I'm nervous a little bit about going home and removing the sweetness from all my coffee because I've started to get used to it. It's so yummy and so refreshing, especially when it's really hot out. Well, we enjoyed everything down to the last ice cube. <laughs> Coming. Coming. All right, well that was a very, very cool cafe. I'm gonna give it a 10 for environment. Just the way they used all the plastics and all the recyclables and all those sorts of things. It was just such an interesting cafe to visit. And then the coffee was, I'm gonna go with a seven. You know, very traditional Vietnamese coffee kind of stuff. Not particularly my cup of tea is Victoria's cup of coffee. <laughs> but yeah, overall 10 for the cafe. It is so cool and seven for the coffee. <laughs>
So I figure while we're walking to our next location, I would give you some fun facts about Vietnamese coffee. So the coffee scene in Vietnam is a product of the French colonialization, but then it super took off since. So it's thanks to the French that we have this incredible coffee culture now here in Vietnam. Vietnam is also the second largest producer of coffee in the world just behind Brazil. So they produce Robusta and Arabica beans in the northern Dalat region here in Vietnam. It is a chain. They have 58 locations across Vietnam and seven internationally in Malaysia and Korea. And it's all this like communist era theme. So it was started in 2007 before a lot of cafes cared about design or aesthetics or anything. And so it's, it took off and we understand why. This place is so, so cool. <laughs> So this is coconut coffee. And when I ordered coconut coffee, I assumed it was just gonna be coconut milk or coconut cream instead of like dairy, um, but it's not. It's like a coconut slushy in with the coffee and it's so refreshing. It's unbelievable. So, so good. Okay, that is insane. Normally like, I like my coffee black, but this is really hitting the spot. <laughs> I'll cheers you too. <laughs> well, absolutely down that. But what the really cool thing about this place are all of the details. So I'm gonna show you around. this place. I have a degree in musical theater and I feel like I just stepped onto the set of South Pacific. How awesome is that? <laughs> What did you think? I love that place. Tens all around. <laughs> Coin Cafe, what am I gonna give it for a rating? I'm gonna give the coffee a seven, which is way higher than I thought I would give it when going in, uh, but it was delicious. And then the cafe itself, I'm actually gonna give it a 10. The atmosphere is so cool and the staff there were just absolutely wonderful. They loved Clara. One of the ladies even helped Victoria do up her uh, Harrier. So, 10 all around in the experience, seven for the coffee. I totally understand why they're so popular and why there are so many locations. They've really got something figured out. All right, now, next stop is probably the one I've been looking forward to the most today. So I'm not gonna give any spoilers, we'll see you there. This feels like a speakeasy. I'm like looking for this secret spot. There's the sign. This is so cool. This might be my favorite and I'm not even there yet. Let's be honest though, Victoria's been giving every spot tens on ambiance and tens on coffee, so. Mm. We're now at Chan Manual Coffee Maker. Cool thing about this spot is all of the coffee that gets brewed is brewed by hand. So no espresso machine, no coffee maker. It's either pour overs or they have this really cool thing where they have to hand press the espresso. We both got iced Americanos because it's super hot out and the air conditioning is kind of in existence. I'm excited to dive into our Americanos. 
coasters attached. <laughs> this is one of the best Americanos that I've had. You can tell that it's really strong, but it doesn't like slap you across the face because it's so smooth and there's so many different flavors going on. That's fantastic. Overall, that was a great experience. The ambiance was fantastic. The coffee was probably the best coffee that we've had in Vietnam. So coffee gets a 10. And ambiance, I'm gonna give an eight. Pretty good day. That being said, it's getting close to dinner time and we're getting pretty hungry. So we're gonna do a bonus cafe. We'll see you in a minute. Bonus Cafe is and Cafe, and it's maybe a 30 second walk, maybe less. No, yeah, not even. <laughs> from our Airbnb, and we've been here maybe eight times, and we just keep coming back for so many reasons. Reason number one, they bring tea as your beverage before anything even comes, just complimentary. Reason number two, and probably should be the most important one, is the people that run this cafe are some of the friendliest people I've never met in my entire life. So incredibly genuine. Reason number three, the food. There's a reason that we keep coming back here. It's not just the ambiance, the people, all of the things that we're still going to talk about, but the food is so delicious and a little bit more creative than just your regular banh mi. They also have a lot of really interesting sides, including French fries, but also some Vietnamese specialties. And they also have a lot of vegetarian options as well. I think every time we've been here, we've gotten the same thing. Banh mi sandwiches, which we actually learned how to say it properly. So I can't do it. <laughs> I definitely didn't, but they're delicious nonetheless. Last but certainly not least, number six is the price. For all of this food, the two cocktails that we had, 289,000 Vietnamese dong, it's pretty cheap. That's amazing. Bye. In case we haven't made it clear enough, we absolutely love Ang Cafe. And I think one of the other cool things that we didn't mention while we were there is that all of the cafes that we went to today, except for this one, kind of had their own little niche. Whereas if you go to Ang Cafe, you can get literally anything. Pour overs, espresso, egg coffee, coconut coffee, all of the things we had today in one spot. It's been a whirlwind of a day. I am ready to call it. I'm tired and hope, hoping that I can sleep despite all of the caffeine. <laughs> so we'll see you next time. Bye. I'm starting say. Oh my goodness. Da, 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 da. Start recording, bozo. Okay, uh, we don't need any more shots, right? I don't think so, nope. I can just walk faster. Yep. Because he's a toasty. Anyways. <laughs> a little softer. Hello. Okay. Yeah, you need, if you want at the mic, don't you? Is it cool and fuzzy? Uh, the food. Wait, that's the reason number three wanted to rise. <laughs> Sixth. <laughs> Words are hard. No, I said so. Oh. Sixth and, you know, not last but certainly not least. That's what I want to say and I just can't get it in my brain. A lot. <laughs> I think that was fine. Yep. Oh, 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 oh. 